Okay, so let's 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 officially start once the recording is on. Uh, then let me let me start and introduce Robert, whom you can see on the screen. Robert is, I would say, a veteran alumni in Poland. He he he's exp free, uh, attending the campus in Barcelona. Am I right, Robert? Yeah, in fact. Uh, uh... We had that discussion with Jenny before you joined. In fact, I started as IXP, not EXP, because at that oh. time, that was, you know, the, the international, the first international program in Barcelona. So, so even the coding was uh, IXP. I started, in fact, with uh, IXP2. That was 1996, so 25 years ago. I mean, uh, turns this year. But then, uh, due to personal and also some 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 conditions at work, I had to. To, to like uh, take a kind of a, like a, a study leave and I finished graduated with IXP3 yeah? because uh, uh, I think I was probably the first case, you know, I don't know Jenny whether now you have this type of situation where people start with one year and they finish with the other, graduate. Yeah, but we still do. I remember when, uh, when, when I, uh, I mean, basically applied for that, that was like a big headache, you know, for the, for the program director because I was the first one. They didn't know, you know, how to manage, you know, what to do, yeah? So, so, so this is another contribution of mine to the, to the IXP, EXP program, you know, that I hope some procedures were, uh, were, were developed, yeah. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much for, for Tomasz, for, for having this idea, Jenny, for uh, generally for, the, for, the, for supporting, you know, this meeting and generally the whole idea of having these meetings uh, because I believe, uh, well, I mean, we are community, you know, we should be community as uh, alumni people, yeah. Uh, I was, uh, for quite a number of years, you know, I mean, uh, in the management team of the Polish Alumni Club, you know, when we started this, you know, I can't remember how many years ago, you know, and, uh, yeah, we were small at that time, there were few people, so we always suffered, uh, because not everybody could participate, and, uh, but also the other issue was if we didn't have like a topic subject to focus on, you know, we are busy people. I mean, it was difficult to, 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 to drag people together. Yeah. So the idea of having these meetings, you know, for, for the broader audience, like uh, Central Europe and uh, or whatever, not Central Europe only because Osama is also like today from Egypt. But generally to have a broader audience, I think it's a, it's a good idea. It's a practical idea. And probably without a COVID corona situation, we would not have come up with this uh, idea so easily, but, uh, but these are the positives, yeah. So, so yeah, I am a veteran in a way of, of the program. Um, and uh, well, today what, what I wanted to, to share with you is uh, a bit of my story of my experience of, uh, spending quite a lot of life, you know, in, uh, in Africa. Uh, but before I start that, you know, start the merits, a uh, few more, 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 more thoughts, you know, about uh, these meetings. I thought these meetings should be really, as I said, we are community, at least this is the way I see it, you know. So, so, so when, when approaching this, I thought, oh, let's, let's, let's have it not as a, another professional type of uh, meeting, you know, another professional whatever presentation where we just uh, present the whatever, the knowledge or the facts or whatever, but just let's have it as an exchange of, uh, well, life experience, you see. I mean, uh, at some stage we are students of Chicago, but then, you know, I mean, we, we continue our journey through life, you know, so, so each of us, you know, on top of, of being the alumni is, is, is uh, I mean, is in the relationship, you know, is I, maybe the parent and so on, yeah. So, and that impacts also, you know, what you do, how you do in your professional life. In our case, I, I have already started saying our because I, I mean, a lot of what I do, I do with my wife, and I will say that in a moment. I mean, uh, this uh, I, I would call it African uh, activity became really part of our life. So, if you have any questions at any stage you know how we manage what does it mean for our life and so on i mean i'm more than happy to to share yeah okay um robert before you start let me let me ask you a question because well you've got a very interesting career you started in the corporate world you you worked for many years for anderson uh, auditing company consulting company 
and then you moved to something else. But I understand that your passion for Africa started earlier, yes? And I, will, I will come to that in a minute. Yeah, okay, I will see. Yeah, okay, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but you are right in a, also in, in that sense, and that is before really going again, that, uh, I mean, we do study, we get knowledge, but I believe we do it for purpose. It's not just only to, to have professional career, you know? I mean, uh, uh, you have your talents, you know, okay, you discover them on the way, but then the big question is, what do you do with it, you know? I mean, how do you, how do you apply in all kinds of different life environment, different conditions? So, so yeah, I mean, even the knowledge which I got, you know, uh, through the, at that time, Barcelona courses, you know, I mean, I still do apply today, but in a very different environment, different situations, yeah. But okay, let's, let's uh, start moving, you know. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance, I sent quite a lengthy uh, presentation. I don't know if, if you had a chance to have a look at that. Uh, so... I did. I to, to present. Bostian, did you, did, did you have a look? Yes, I did, okay. yeah. Osama, you, you, you had a chance or not? Yep, I did. Okay, great. So I'm not going to repeat it now, all of it, you know. I, I, I chose some of the elements, you know, because the idea, at least my, my proposal would be that I, I just go through a number of, uh, uh, like, uh, I'm not even sure the most important point, but a number of points. And then uh, following what, what, what I present and following the, what I have sent you, you know, I mean, we can talk about any, any, any topics, any, develop any issues, yeah. Okay, so going forward. So, so yeah, to start a bit of self-presentation, introduction of myself. So as you said, uh, Tomas, yeah, I, I mean, I, I studied, you know, basically my master's in, uh, in Warsaw, Warsaw School of Economics. Uh, that was the, the second half of the 80s, you know, I mean, so still under the, the, the socialist uh, system in Poland. I started 84, graduated 1990. Uh, then also I did the, the MBA IXP3 at that time and I graduated 98. Uh, so graduating 1990 in Poland was a, was a really a special time because imagine this is like, I always compare it to the, uh, like a horse racing track. You, I don't know if you, if you, you know, you have horses and then suddenly the gate opens, you see, and the horses start running, you know? So imagine you are the first horse, you know, in the row, you know, and the, the door opens. That was really me and my, my colleagues, you know, I mean, uh, at that time, we were graduates of the, of the uh, well, probably one of the, the, the best universities, you know, and uh, I studied international trade. So, so really life at that time was uh, very, very, I would say interesting for, for people like, like myself, uh, because you had lots of opportunities. In fact, I became the, uh, the first recruit of, uh, of the company called Andersen. Today, I mean, less and less people, you know, know what Andersen uh, used to be, but, but that was really one of the best consulting companies at some stage, you know, in the, in the past before, uh, I still say because it was killed by George W. Bush, you know, at some stage. Uh, but uh, that was also the, uh, the, 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 like, uh, the, the school of life and school of professional life for myself. I started as an assistant, but uh, I went the ladder all the way up to, the, to becoming the partner of, the, of, of Andersen, you know. Uh, and then 2002, we had the, the end of Andersen, you know, because of the Enron case. Uh, most of uh, our colleagues in Poland, at that time we were a big company, we were like 900 people in Poland. Uh, I was the, the managing partner for the consulting part rest of the company except for consulting joined Ernst and Young. They had to do it, you know, I mean, very quickly. We could not, so because of some, some contractual, you know, arrangements. So, so I was together with the other five partners of ourselves. Some of them, in fact, alumni of uh, uh, also Chicago, like Darek Kraszewski. You know, we managed the company as, as a Polish operation of Andersen, you know, for another three years. Uh, but because my colleagues wanted to, to join, again, the big international company, and I was of the view that you never go to the same water twice, I, I sold my shares, you know, and uh, I decided to, to become like independent consultant on one hand. But at that time, you know, also the idea of uh, 
setting up the, the small NGO called Poland East Africa Economic Foundation came up, you know, and, uh, and uh, I registered and uh, together with my wife and we started running this, uh, I will tell you in a moment uh, about what we are doing. My wife, uh, yeah, I mean, everything we do, we do together. Yeah. So she, she was born in the family of photographers and she's a professional photographer. She's also the graduate of the same school. Uh, this is where we met. Uh, she was also the first uh, recruit of the company Unilever. I don't know if you know, you know, probably Unilever. I mean, all the, you know, the, the, the big uh, drug and uh, whatever, domestic uh, chemistry company. But now she's a professional photographer and uh, co-founder of the Poland East Africa Economic Foundation uh, and mom of, of two adult children, our children. In fact, I have to tell you, time passes so quickly. Last year, our, our son uh, got married and we are going to be grandparents, you know, this, uh, this September. Yeah? So I cannot believe that, you know, I mean, yeah. Uh, so what do I do? in terms of more kind of professional aspect. I would say uh, these three uh, words, you know, describe really, I mean, uh, even being with Anderson, I very much focused uh, on effectiveness. Effectiveness meaning, uh, I mean, completing, you know, execution, completing, you know, tasks, doing things, you know, uh, uh, with the definite end, because uh, I mean, lots of assignment, you know, which I was involved, lots of projects. I could see that the, 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 most of the problems come from the fact that, you know, people rush for, for efficiency, but really forget, you know, what they want to achieve and why. You know? so, so really I started specializing in effectiveness from the, the early, early beginning. And this is what I also do with the local clients in Poland, but not only as a freelance consultant. The other is development. I mean, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the introduction, I believe every one of us is given the talent and we should not keep that talent without really developing these talents, you see. Okay, the big issue is to, to discover your talents, you see, and uh, to grow them, but, uh, uh, but really to, to make something about them. And then Africa. And I will explain why, why Africa in a moment. Uh, yeah, uh, this uh, effectiveness, uh, well, I mean, basically, I don't know if you agree, but uh, my observation is that uh, really, I mean, we are like 100% focus on efficiency, faster, better, more, and so on. Yeah, this is in fact uh, the, the 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 big contributor to the to the stress of the, uh, I mean, everyday life. You know, in the in the in the Western society, uh, when we tend to forget about this effectiveness, which is which is getting right things uh, done. So. So really the aspect of completion and relevance uh, uh, to identify main objective is, is really what, 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 I, what I focus on. Uh, and uh, I have to, to tell you that uh, since not so many people, you know, really devote their time and uh, thinking about that, I mean, I cannot complain in terms of the, uh, the, 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 the business, you know, with, uh, with my clients. These are mostly uh, either members of, of management boards or entrepreneurs and I am kind of a, a person you know I mean confronting them you know in terms of uh, uh, will they really get where they want to yeah development one point I wanted to stress uh, you see when when you talk and I mean generally in terms of international uh, economics uh, and generally international you know comparisons I mean we we, we tend to uh, to understand development as a, as a growth of GDP. Yeah? I mean, so really in uh, quantitative terms, uh, measuring only one aspect uh, of, uh, I mean, okay, of kind of development. But to me, development is not the same as growth. Yeah, I mean, development is really progress in all kinds of different dimensions. Yeah, so, and it doesn't have to be the, 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 the line upwards. You know, it can be, I mean, the horizontal, sometimes down, but as long as you progress in terms of, uh, I mean, getting to, 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 to the objectives which you set, which you identified, which you understood at the beginning, I mean, you, you really do develop, yeah? So, so the same comes, applies to, to what I'm doing now, you know, uh, one with my clients, but also in Africa. So I come to that in a moment. And now why Africa, yeah? Because uh, as you said, uh, Tomasz, uh, in fact, my interest started much earlier. It goes back, you know, to, to again, to 89, 
in fact, to 1988, you know, at that time, uh, uh, I used to study with a, with a friend of mine who is half Polish, half Kenyan. Uh, that's another interesting story. You know, his father was one of the, the people, you know, one of the Africans, you know, who walked, imagine, he walked from Nairobi to, to Cairo, so Osama. Uh, that's credit to, to Egypt, you know. He walked to Cairo on foot, you know, can you imagine? Wow. Uh, and uh, he, because he wanted to get education and by chance, by coincidence, you know, the, the Polish embassy was really the, the first one he, he came across. And this is how he started studying in Poland, 1960, whatever, two or something like that. Yeah. Uh, then he got married with the Polish, you know, lady and uh, my, my, my friend, you know, half Polish, half Kenyan, then as a second generation also studied in Poland. This is how we met. So, so you can imagine, this is the end of the socialism in Poland, you know, uh, crisis approaching, not so much of uh, bright prospects because we didn't know what we are going to do, you know. So, so we came with this crazy idea, why don't we go to Africa, you know, I mean, uh, uh, so easier said than done. But then uh, we said, why not? I mean, let's do something, you know, really different. Uh, so we had to, 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 to get some money, you know, uh, that was Scandinavia, picking strawberries, selling, you know, all kinds of uh, stuff, you know, to get money. We were lucky. I think that the God was with us because we really got, like for that time, a lot of money, you know, I mean, uh, in thousands of dollars. So we were able to buy the first Land Rover, the, the green one you see on the picture behind me. And then, uh, and then we set off, you know, and the, the, the black... Uh, line you know uh, is more or less the the, the route uh, we followed so we at that time we did not pass through egypt uh, we took the, the we believed at that time more uh, kind of uh, challenging you know route through through algeria through niger uh, then through all these other countries in total more than 20 20 countries in africa uh, and ended up eventually in nairobi you know after 10 months but the interesting thing is, uh, you see, 89, I mean, at that time, there, there were no mobile phones. There were no, you know, I mean, uh, and in fact, also in terms of source of the information, the only source of information was, uh, was an encyclopedia book, really. I mean, when you wanted to read something, you know, there was no Google, you know, nothing like that, or Wikipedia. You, you had to go to the library and take, uh, take uh, you know, encyclopedia books, you know, and then study what you wanted to find out, yeah. Uh, but after 10 months, you know, I mean, we managed to, to, to get to Nairobi and uh, really I, I, I got infected with Africa at that time, you know. People say that uh, generally you have two types of people who go, who visit Africa. I mean, some people who go there, they say, ah, I mean, uh, I never go back. But the other, they, they got infected for life. Yeah? And I think I'm in the, in the latter group, you know, in, in terms of that. Yeah. So that was 1989. Uh, uh, and between uh, 89 and 2005, when I, I mean, basically quit Anderson. I mean, we visited with my wife, with our children, uh, Africa, I don't know how many times, 20, 30, 40 times, you know, we stopped counting, you know, at that time. But initially that was as a tourist, but then more travelers going to more and more deep, you know, places. But in the end, we started spending quite a lot of people, quite a lot of time with uh, with the local people, you know, and uh, this is what we started enjoying really the most because uh, we could see that uh, really, I mean, life is, is, except for some external artifacts, I mean, life is, is really the same, yeah, or maybe even more meaningful, you know, over there. But in the meantime, being the consultant of, the, of, of Anderson, you know, I, I thought, ah, this is a great, you know, business opportunity. So 2005, we, we set up, we this foundation, Poland East Africa, with the initial idea that I will be bringing people by business, you know, from Poland to, to, to Africa. But, uh, but of course, that was very naive, you know, at that time, you know, because 2005 is, uh, is one year after Poland joined European Union. So you can imagine most of people, like 99.9% .9 in Poland, as, at least in, in terms of the, the business environment, they were learning what is the direction of Brussels, not what is the direction of Nairobi. Yeah? They, they could not understand, you know, I mean, I mean so, so really, I mean, uh, thinking about business in Africa, that was like a, like a 
magic, you know, it's, I mean, and uh, uh, so I had to, to, you know, to, 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 to kind of uh, swallow the, the frog, you know, that ah, there will be no business out of that. But uh, we, we understood that, uh, uh, you know, really what always pays off and has a value is, is, is knowledge. You have to build a real deep knowledge, you know, I mean, of, uh, of people, of the place, uh, and uh, to see where the value, you know, can be, can be built. But the value, not in the sense of the venture capital, you know, that's also can be one of the aspects, but, but the real human and a much broader value. Yeah? But the idea of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, seeing that value in Africa is still with us, with me, you know, and uh, I could see a lot of development in the meantime. And that is also one of the reasons why why I, I started, you know, like uh, claiming that, uh, you know, Africa is a continent of the 21st century for, for some time, you know, having, you know, meetings, presentations, being, you know, the speaker at different, uh, like uh, business conferences. I mean, uh, I mean uh, this, is, this is really one of the key, key slogans I try to, to, to you know, to, to educate people about. And I, there is a number of reasons, you see. Uh, I just quoted a number of them here, you see, like, uh, and these are mostly from the, from the business uh, environment. Uh, I don't know if you, if you are aware of, of, of them, but when you look today, uh, like, for example, 60% of the world arable land, which is still available for producing food, is in Africa. Energy, sun energy, almost half, you know, I mean, is Africa, yeah? In terms of population, you can see, I mean, the, how it will develop. I will devote a few, few minutes uh, after that, you know. Now it is uh, less than 20%, but soon it will be 25%. But then, you know, at the end of this century, you know, it will be 40%. So almost every second, you know, uh, human will be African, you know, at that time. Yeah? Uh, in terms of natural resources, you can see, you know, I mean, all these resources, you see. And most of them I chose, you know, as the ones which are relevant today. Yeah? I mean, uh, more and more looking, you know, at the, at the kind of economy or whatever of the, of the future. But not only that, you know, I mean, when you look at the, at the three points at the bottom of the, of, the, of, the, of the picture, in terms of politics, you know, I mean, uh, 54 countries, that's uh, like, again, a quarter of all the votes on the, the General Assembly, United Nations General Assembly. Yeah? So it's a big power, you know, I mean, uh, in terms of that. But also in, on, the, on the human side, uh, I mean, uh, I mean the, 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 the human attitude, the human, you know, I mean, the, the people behave, you know, like optimism and creativity, you know, of African people. Of course, it's coming, you know, from, from different reasons, you see, but generally, I mean, uh, these are, these are very, very happy people in a way, you know, I mean, the way we see African people, you know, I mean, through our, you know, glasses, through our kind of uh, very narrow perspective, we, 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 we say, you know, ah, this problem, that problem, you know, but really when, when you live, you know, with people in Africa, I mean, I have uh, even, I mean, working, you know, in the slums of Nairobi, I have almost very rarely come across people who would say, oh, we are very unhappy. You know? No, no, people are happy, you know, because maybe they expect less from life and they are happy with what they get, but generally they are very open, you know, for, for that, which is a very, very important, you know, I mean, uh, uh, attitude and feature looking, looking, you know, for the, uh, for the future. But also human heritage and values. I mean, people in Africa, they stick much more to the real values, you see. Family is still family, of course, this is also under big pressure of the, of the today's world, but still when it comes to many, uh, many aspects, you know, uh, I mean, the, the people in Africa, they, they don't pretend, they don't preach values, they rather practice values, you know. Uh, although, as I say, I mean, the, 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 the life become, becomes also much more complex, having, having pressures from other parts of the world, but, uh, but still, I believe, I mean, uh, Africans will, will, will manage, you know, to, to to stick to, 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 to this. So these are like important elements, you know, uh, which I believe uh, uh, they, they constitute the, the milestones for, for 21st century. But to be very specific. Okay. Let, me, let me ask you a question on, on, the, on the previous slide. Uh, do you believe that uh, China's interest in, in Africa, is it 
just natural resources, rare, rare, rare minerals, or uh, is it like a way actually to dominate the continent? Well, I mean, uh, I have a few slides at the end about that, you know, so I will, I will come to that. But generally, I would say it's a, it's a more uh, complex than just natural resources. Of course, natural resources are part of the game, yeah? But, but also political influence, you know, these 54 votes, you know, uh, I mean, the land, you know, the energy, I mean, that, that's, I would say, I, I, can, I could pick, you know, all these points, you know, and say that Chinese are really addressing, you know, all of them, you know, in a, in a very smart and, uh, I mean, uh, not maybe aggressive way in a bad sense, but, you know, like, like consistent way yeah, of, of mm -hmm. doing so. So, so definitely they identified, you know, these items and they, they go for them, you know, in that sense. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can, but but can, at the end, I, I will, I will come to that, you know, I will show you, share some of the, 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 the you know, uh, uh, more specific facts about uh, relating to that question. Mm -hmm. Thomas, that's of course a very complex question, uh, like uh, uh, Robert said. Uh, I think main priority is natural resources. Also what Robert said, it has to do with political influence. Third, they are Belt Road Initiative. And fourth, which is also very important, um, there obviously we see democracies on one hand, we see autocratic systems on the other hand in the planet, and it looks like there's sort of uh, an interest among the autocracies to collaborate, you know, yeah. and, uh, and like Biden, President Biden in the US just said, um, he tries to start and found an initiative of democracies as a counter uh, movement towards what we see of the autocratic tendencies around the planet. Um, but yeah, Robert, it's very, very complex. I agree. Um, I've written a bunch of articles on that topic. I can put them in uh, uh, in the chat if you guys yeah, want. Please, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think we yeah. come to that because this is definitely one of the uh, the, the very, very important, you know, I mean, uh, aspects when you look at uh, at Africa. Yeah. Uh, but the, the the other very, very important point, you know, which uh, which I think will have huge impact, and we seem to kind of neglected, you know, or, or treated. I mean, when I say we, I mostly refer to, to, to Europe, you know, at this stage, yeah, is really the, the demographics, you know, the human aspects, yeah. Uh, look, I mean, uh, by the way, I found a very, very good, interesting website called uh, Population Pyramid, you know, and uh, I took, you know, these uh, graphs from there. You can play, play you know, with, with each country with dynamic, you know, uh, in fact, I have it somewhere here. So you see, like, uh, you can play with that, you know, I mean, going backwards uh, or going forward, you know, and the, the, you see how the, the pyramids change, you know. Uh, so, so if you want to, you can refer always to that. Uh, but, uh, but look, this is the situation today, you know. I mean, uh, as we stand, 2021, you know. Uh, when I went to, to Africa for the first time, 89, there were less than 700 million people in Africa, you see. Only 30 years later, you know, we have this 1.3, almost 1.4 billion, you know, of people in Africa uh, with this uh, demographic uh, pyramid, you know, I mean, the shape of the pyramid. And uh, this is the, the, the one on the right is, is Europe, you know, so we are 747, you know, jumbo, you know, I mean, kind of, you know, uh, and this is our, our, our shape of our pyramid. Uh, what is very important, three quarters of people are the age less than 35 in Africa. So this is more than 1 billion people. And uh, in Europe, this is less than 40%, less than 300 million euro. When you, when you look what is going to happen, this is uh, 2041, which is in 20 years from now, which is really tomorrow, believe me. I mean, uh, when I think that I started, you know, EXP 25 years ago in Barcelona, I mean, to me, I mean, this is like, like yesterday, you know, so really 2040 is, is like tomorrow, 20 years from now. In Africa, by that time, we are going to have more than 2 billion people. In Europe, we are going to have, uh, yeah, I mean, a uh, declining number, 720, whatever. And, and compared to many other discussions where people play and juggle, you know, with numbers, these numbers, I would say, they are pretty accurate, you know. I mean, the, the, the margin of error here is not so big, you know. So even if we are wrong, you know, I mean, the, 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 the I don't know how you call them, the, 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 
people who deal with demographics, you know, I mean, uh, if they are wrong by, by uh, on the African side, by 100 million, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't change the, the picture. If they are wrong by 100 million in Europe, let's say, that, that, I mean, that makes the, the, the point I'm trying to make even more difficult. But then look at what is going to happen. At that time, people around uh, less than 35, there will be 70% of people in Africa, one point, almost 1.5 billion people. So between today, when we speak, and uh, in 20 years from now, we are going to have another half a billion people of young Africans, you know, next door. Uh, in total, there will be 1.5 billion, you know, people, you know, of young people. In Europe at that time, there will be, you know, 260, 250, you know, million people, you know, of that. What does it mean? I mean, it's a huge, you know, I mean, huge challenge. I think it's much bigger challenge than the COVID situation today, because uh, look, we are humans, you know, I mean, uh, by coincidence, we were born either Poland, Germany or Zambia or whatever, you know, I mean, uh, the, the, I have not contributed anything to the fact that I was born in Poland, you know, I mean, uh, somebody else was, has not contributed anything, you know, to, to the fact was born, you know, in France or whatever, it's just pure coincidence. But if we don't notice, you know, this, what is going to happen, you know, in terms of uh, that these people, you know, who are like our neighbors, very close neighbors, they are there and there will be many more of them. You know, I mean, we can see, a, I can see a huge challenge and huge, in fact, crisis, you know, really coming, you know, very, very soon. Yeah? Because, uh, I mean, with today's development of telecommunication, you know, I mean, uh, the people, the young people in Africa, you know, they, I mean, they know everything, you know, I mean, they are communicated, they have either uncle or the brother or whoever, you know, somewhere. So really like uh, building another, you know, wall, you see like, 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 uh, whatever in uh, Europe, either this is the, the wall on the ocean, on the Mediterranean Sea, or wall, you know, around us. I mean, there is no such a high wall, you know, I mean, which people cannot cross, you know especially when we when we talk about uh, this magnitude of numbers you see so 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 when we talk with many people you know we also try to show that what is being you know done with I mean, at the moment in europe is a completely wrong approach you know because either building all kinds of fences the walls or doing inter interventions you know in a very ineffective way is not going to change the, 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 the situation. I mean, the young people with all their energy, openness, enthusiasm, you know, I mean, uh, they, they will look for better lives, you see, whether we like it or not, you know, and uh, again, coming from a country and still remembering, you know, how it was, you know, during the, uh, like uh, I would say the, 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 the socialist system when we were poor and then changing, you know, I mean, I mean, it's natural, you want to, to develop, you want to grow, you want to experience, you want to see, you know, I mean, uh, so, 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 so one of the big issues, why also the Africa can be the continent of the 21st century is that uh, we have this, this type of uh, uh, picking bomb, you know, if we don't manage the, 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 the situation, the development in a, in a proper human effective way. So what do we do now coming to the very micro, micro, I would say scale by we, I mean, me, my wife, our small NGO and so on, because when we realized, of course, I mean, we, 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 we knew we cannot do everything, you know, we cannot change. I still uh, work with the Polish government, but of course, Poland is not the key player in Africa. I work, you know, with the, I mean, the present, do lots of presentations and so on but not to be just uh, another talking head, you know? I mean, we, we decided that we really want to, to be involved at the very bottom to understand what is going on, you know? How people think, what people really need, and not just to, to repeat, you know, others' uh, uh, stories. So basically we, we work with people at the grassroots levels. So at the very, very bottom, uh, yeah, sharing skills and knowledge. So. Like today, I had a Zoom meeting. I mean, one of the last projects which you could see that was with, uh, with the dairy, dairy plant, you know. After it 
finished. Now I do kind of mentoring, you know, of the of the of the of the current management, and we do like now uh, we try to solve the aging of debtors. You know, I mean, they have receivables, a lot of receivables from clients. We try to to you know to do all kinds of analysis, all kinds of practical ways of uh, how to recover money and so on. So this is also sharing the knowledge of uh, you know uh, either I studied at the the Chicago. GSB booth at the, I mean a booth at GSB at that time or then practice you know within Anderson. Uh, my wife is a photographer, so we also do share you know a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge of that. Uh, but in in essence, we try to build bridges, not fences. You know, in 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 that sense. Uh, so between uh, 2008, when we started our first projects. And now we have completed uh, 30 projects in the East African region. So these are the, the, these countries, you know, basically countries covering the East African community, Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, Uganda. You may ask why, why East Africa? Uh, well, firstly, because, I mean, this is the area which we know the best. I mean, the, the Nairobi, as I mentioned, was the country, uh, sorry, the, the town in Kenya was the country which was kind of our first love, you know? I mean, this is where we stopped, uh, finished our, our travel at that time. So by definition, I, uh, we got to know Kenya the best. And then out of Kenya, I mean, the other regions of, uh, the other countries of the region. Uh, but also by purpose, we limited ourselves at least uh, in terms of the, 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 the very specific activities to these countries. Africa is huge, you know? It's a very big place uh, in, a, in a physical, uh, uh, sense. I mean, three times bigger in terms of the area than Europe, uh, but uh, also in geographical sense that sometimes, you know, when you travel, I mean, it may be not very many kilometers, but takes time, not only because the maybe quality of the road is not perfect, but also of natural conditions. I mean, you may have, you know, such a heavy rain that, uh, I mean, the road was, was there yesterday. It's not there today, you know, so you will you will pass 20 kilometers a day and so on, yeah? So, uh, so, so we said we have to limit ourselves to one region. Africa is just to beat, and East Africa is the, the, our choice. Uh, out of these old projects, 28 still live their own lives. So that means people whom we work with, you know, I mean, they continue what we, what we, what we, what we started doing together. Of course, I said their own lives because, you know, things evolve, you know? Uh, so, so if we did something together in 2008 uh, and it looked one way or the other, I mean, of course, today after 20, I mean, uh, not 20, 15, 13, 10 years, uh, conditions change, people, you know, I mean, grow or change their uh, the way of, of doing things. But, 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 I mean, they continue their, their ideas we started together. Mostly these are projects of a, a social entrepreneurial nature. So even if you have the, the social aspect like, uh, like the school or let's say uh, changing the, the livelihood of uh, Kilimanjaro farmers and so on, there must be this kind of uh, entrepreneurial business aspect uh, attached because, uh, well, people have to, to make uh, enough income to, 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 to be self-sustainable. You know, I mean, we don't believe in... Uh, in development, you know, uh, I mean, all the funding, you know, I mean, uh, has to, to be pumped, you know, like injection all the time from outside. I mean, this is not good for social purposes. It's not good for economic purposes. People, people really have to, to, to become entrepreneurs in that sense. So, so all these projects have this, this uh, nature. Robert, Robert, what's the, what's, the, what's the average volume of a project? Is it like one tribe or is it like a huge volume or how big can uh, I, or small can I, can I uh, see them? Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, uh, not really tribes in a sense. You mean in terms of the, the, what, the number of people involved or what? Yeah, number of people involved, maybe or maybe not uh, money volume, but generally how, yeah. what's the, what's the sc scope and scale of them? Yeah, well, uh, well, they are, I would say, Again, I mean, you have in, in a different way people, you know, who, who are affected, you know, and involved, yeah, but, but usually this goes into hundreds, if not thousands of people. It's not like one or two people, yeah. Uh, probably the smallest one was uh, where you had, uh, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to, to have a look at the presentation I sent, mm -hmm. 
there was uh, the, the one about this kindergarten, the, the, this Anasia, you know, she started, so probably she's the smallest, you know, with the 50, 60 children, you know, uh, at present, you know, and some, but mostly like the, the very last one, you know, where uh, we deal with, you know, with the dairy, dairy plant and the two cooperatives in total, there is almost 1,000 farmers, you know, who are involved. Okay. Yeah? So, okay. they are, I would say, for the micro scale, we are doing this. You know, they are sizable. Yeah. You know, in terms of the the number of people directly participating. Of course, the level of direct involvement is different because you have the mm. uh, the people who are like employed or they they found a job, and the others they just deliver the milk. You see, I mean, every day. Yeah. So, mm. but 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 they are directly impacted. Do you in get do you, size, do, yeah? Do you get funding? From uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, some... uh, in terms of now the funding, in terms of the size of the money, again you see, uh, of course, funding money is important because in the end this is like the oil in the engine, you know. I mean, we, you, you cannot continue without the oil, yeah, or the, the fuel, the, the gasoline, you know. But uh, uh, so so yes, we do get funding, and our experience now for now is that we got most of the funding for the sizable projects from the Polish government. We, okay. we take part, you know, in the, in the calls for proposals, you know, we propose projects, you know, proposals. Mm. Uh, and since we have, uh, uh, I would say, and this is not just to praise ourselves, but I would say above average knowledge of the, of the, of the, of the aspects Africa. So we got credibility. So our success rate is, uh, is high to get, you know, these type of approvals for the projects. Mm. And uh, they they are in the middle. They are like now between one hundred thousand uh, to three hundred thousand US dollars. Yeah, okay, in that, nice. in that uh, mm. uh, range. Yeah, but we also did smaller ones, like yeah, fifty thousand yeah. US dollars and so on. Yeah. So what's your annual but what's your annual budget? The whole annual budget of your whole uh, NGO. You know, uh, well, like last year it was uh, three hundred thousand US dollars. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, nice. Because, uh, but again, it's a kind of, uh, we, we, since, I mean, the, the whole NGO, really, in an in a, in a actual sense, it is me and my wife. I mean, mm. then we don't have any employees. We don't of have course. any big structures. Mm. After, you know, many years in the big corporates, you know, I mean, uh, one of the promises we made ourselves is uh, that uh, we don't want to have big structures, you know, to think how to feed them, how to do, you know, uh, mm. how to play with the complexity of the big structure. Mm. We, 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 we attract people. We tend to, you know, if we have like uh, issues of merits, like for example, again, I take the example of the dairy business. We are not ex experts in milk, mm. but I mean, it's easy to find people, you know, I mean, uh, who are experts, you know, so we, we kind of get them on board, you know, if we need them, you know, to, uh, on a different type of assignment, you know, I mean, to, to mostly these are volunteers, you know, mm. they yeah. want to join because when they see that this is interesting, you know, and they can contribute. Uh, so, so, so far we have never had a problem, you know, to find people who would like to join. And, uh, and in most cases, I mean, uh, these are not people who want to be paid. They want to, to, to join and contribute, you know, in that sense. Yeah. No, I know. No, no. Uh, so, so in terms of, uh, we don't have the industry specialization because uh, mm -hmm. we realize that, uh, you know, I mean, it's not like a key success factor. Mm. What is really the key success factor for the, for the, for the good development is uh, uh, that you identify and work with the, I call them true local leaders. These mm. are really the people, you know, who to make a difference, uh, yeah. who are behind the, the development in the, in the field. I mean, uh, firstly, mm. all the ideas, when you, when you looked at the cases I attached you know, to the presentation, none of them was uh, of our origin. I mean, we are not the ones, you know, to, to come up with, with the idea what is good for somebody, you know. We, uh, I think even from the very beginning, we, we through discussion, visits, we, we, we meet people, you know, and then uh, try to make our judgments whether somebody uh, has prospect to be like a, like a good uh, local leader. This is like a recruitment process, you know, in the corporate business, you know, or any other business, you know. I mean, if you do get good recruitment, you progress. If you, if you, if you, don't do good recruitment, you know, I mean, you, you, you keep fire, firefighting, you know. The same here, you know, with the projects. We spend a lot of time, you know, really uh, recruiting good local leaders. And then when it comes to execution of the project, you know, I mean, it's, it's much more easier. But this is the reason why we don't have the industry specialization. 
one time we are the beekeeping you know, experts, next time kindergarten, next time, you know, dairy business, you know, another time uh, the water dam, you know, for irrigation and so on, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, in the end, of course, we are aware that what we are doing is a micro scale, you know, in that sense. And uh, we are not going to solve, you know, all the issues, problems. Uh, but we decided, look, I mean, we want to, to, to build solid foundations. And these solid foundations, uh, they, they are in a different aspect, you know. One is uh, uh, for the last, uh, two, from 2008, when we started, it's 14, 14th year, I think we have kind of uh, developed, managed, you know, uh, to, to grow with us. Uh, at least, I don't know, 60, 70 people who are kind of good experienced managers in African environment, you know, I mean, local environment, you know, these people now, they, they, they manage local communities, uh, they, they, they manage uh, smaller or bigger, you know, African, you know, businesses, micro businesses, and uh, they are also the kind of uh, leaders for other people, you know, because they manage, you know, their the local communities, other people. So, so we believe, you know, uh, building the solid foundations, you know, for, for good development. This is what we are after at this, at this stage. Yeah? We believe time will come maybe, you know, when uh, people in Europe wake up, you know, they will change. Uh, even today, in fact, I have participated, you know, in a, in a, in a uh, conference uh, run by the, organized by the, by the Polish Foreign Ministry, you know, where they were uh, invited, uh, they were asked by EU Commission to, to consult the uh, the new kind of uh, priority areas for for the cooperation for the next uh, eight years, seven years, yeah, to 21 to 20, 27. Unfortunately, through the discussion, I still can see that the EU and Commission, they are talking still more from the position of uh, kind of, uh, we know better, you know, or we know how to do it, you know. So, so, so we believe the time for really good development is still ahead of us one day. Uh, one thing I would like to uh, throw in, um, uh, a major factor of the, um, influencing the whole immigration tendencies will be climate change. Uh, a lot of immigration we see now is already induced by climate change around the world. And Africa and parts of Africa certainly will be hit by the change of climates. And that will uh, force people to move or leave their original soil. Uh, yeah. Just one thing I wanted to throw in, but I'm sure there's many, many Definitely. more. Things. Climate... Uh... But, but, but this, I mean, no doubt, uh, but not only climate, I would say, you know, I mean, really the, 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 the growth of uh, absolute number of young people, you know, I mean, uh, people are just curious. I mean, they want to, to explore, they want to see the world, you know. If you, I might uh, share with you later, uh, last year, the United Nations, they, they, for the first time, they interviewed, you know, the, the people from these boats, you know, I mean, uh, on Lampedusa, you know, the Italian island, you know, and uh, they interviewed uh, almost 2,000 of these uh, migrants, you know, who, who go there. And uh, the, the, the results of, uh, you know, these interviews, they were really, I mean, like eye-opening, you know, because, uh, I mean, 95% uh, of these people who are on the boats, you know, I mean, these are people who are well above average, you know, in terms of their uh, society position, you know, in, uh, in their countries. They are well educated, you know, they are, they just want, they want to have the potential to, to develop their lives, yeah. But that's, so, that's also a huge problem because many refugees that came to Europe, the real poor ones, they're still stuck in their countries. The ones that came were the stronger ones or the educated ones or even the reckless ones throwing others from the boat. That is one of the issues, one of the problems we are facing. But but point I'm making is that again, everybody wants to 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 to, have to, to develop you know in life whether this is uh, somebody from Niger or somebody from you know uh, from from France or Germany or from Poland or whatever why not I mean uh, this is this is natural we have to understand that you know mm -hmm. uh, here Robert, I mean, very Robert, quickly, uh, let, I can see that Osama Osama has a question yes please yeah. Hi, Robert. No, actually, it's not a question as much as something that I wanted to share with you. So uh, in terms of your uh, development efforts, um, so I was part of this uh, student organization. It used to be called the Students in Free Enterprise. It used to be called SIFE. Now it's called Enactus. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it has a global presence. And it has a, has a presence in Kenya since 2003 or 2005, if, I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. 
And uh, the whole purpose of this organization is that it gives university students the freedom to come up with projects that create economic opportunity for others. And um, I'm sure like uh, a significant number of universities are, uh, are, uh, are participating in this organization. And what happens is there's a national competition at the end of every year. And uh, the national champion gets to represent uh, their own country in the, in the Enactus World Cup. Um, so I think this is, this is a, a resource that I'm certain will, uh, will be of great benefit to you. And uh, at, the, at the same time, if, I mean, if, if your organization wishes to be a sponsor, this would be perfect because you get to, uh, whether it be a special competition that you, uh, that you pick its uh, category or if you want it to be in general, um, you get to see uh, a lot of uh, hands-on involvement from those those uh, those students. I'm sure they know their communities very very well. They have their um, very bright ideas, very out of the box ideas. Um, I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, this could be of, uh, of, of 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 possible assistance to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So so I don't know if you. Uh, I mean, if you could put in the I don't know. We, do we have, do we have sure. the chat? Some uh, specific names and so on. I will, I will, I will definitely be interested to 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 learn more. Yep. Okay. Uh, briefly, yes. No, no. I'm just saying I, I sent it. It's called Enactus okay, Canyon. Okay, okay. Briefly, I mean, again, I, I'm not going to go in detail through this. You know, uh, I will just pick a few points. This is the last example, you know, of the projects which we have just completed. You know, not in fact completed. I mean, we completed in a formal way that. Uh, you know, we had to, to report to the ministry, you know, uh, with uh, like, like a closing the, 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 the certain uh, uh, program, you know, but, but of course life, life continues, you know. So as I told you, I mean, uh, I'm still with these people, you know, and now doing kind of a, like, a, like a mentoring because they became part of our life, yeah. So starting with the, with the, with the, uh, this uh, notion idea of the lo true local leader. Sometimes these are young people, sometimes these are, you know, like in that case, you see this uh, gentleman, he's an unbelievable man, you know, I mean, he was, uh, he's a Tanzanian, he's like, uh, I mean, this year he's 80 years old. He was, imagine, he was in the group of the first 10 Tanzanians taken by John Fitzgerald Kennedy to US to study, you know, 1961, you know. Uh, so really big part of the world history, you know, I mean, also in terms of, uh, of these type of things, you know, and then after working for IMF, you know, he got back and, uh, now he, he really, he's a champion of the local community development, you know, in, uh, that is Kilimanjaro, Tanzania. Yeah? Uh, this was another, another guy, not as, uh, exposed to the world, but also full of visions. I mean, unfortunately passed away, you know, during the project, uh, uh, but his legacy also is important part of uh, that people in, in his uh, village area, you know, which is also slopes of Kilimanjaro, they want to continue to develop the, the, the milk collection and milk processing. Yeah? Uh, again, the issue, there is always kind of a social issue behind, you know, I mean, all these, because uh, again, development in, in that sense, you know, serves to not only to grow in an abstract way, but also to address, you know, some of the, the, the issues, you know, like in case of, of this Kilimanjaro, you know, it was a perfect coffee growing area, you know, but now it is almost like uh, disappearing, you know, so, so people uh, had to, to change, you know, what they do and uh, uh, the, 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 the breeding, you know, the milk cows became one of the cash crop kind of alternatives. Yeah? Again, we did a lot, you know, uh, in terms of the actual uh, real, I wanted to show you that the, 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 this is not just sharing the skills, but also hard hard facts, like, uh, uh, and that was in our proposal. So we got funding for that, you know. I mean, the idea of, of, uh, of, of this uh, mze, mze in Swahili means all the respected men, mze kimaro, yeah? So this is how you, how you address, you know, the old uh, people with respect, mze kimaro. I mean, that was a piece of land, which you see now here. This is the same place. And uh, this is the, the, you call it the Wicca Dairy Farmers Support Center. So they do a lot of activities there now, you know, they produce animal feed, you know, they uh, uh, process hay and so on. Yeah, this is to support farmers to, to, to grow the number of, uh, I mean, uh, milk production, you know. Uh, 
we also did quite a lot of uh, you know development investment in the dairy plant you know where they process the uh, the milk collected from farmers uh, we, we we brought some tanks you know uh, and other processing equipment from Poland you know and in fact also here we tried to uh, to, to to get like a real value for money you know so 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 through experts you know Poland is a one of the key EU now milk producers. So we have a lot of expertise. Uh, we managed to get involved experts from, from Poland, you know, who helped us to, to collect, uh, to select uh, equipment, which, uh, which is uh, second hand, but much better, you know, than currently produced, you know, because of the much higher quality of production some 10, 20 years ago, you know, but of a different uh, fraction of the cost, you know, which, 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 which uh, will perfectly do the purpose, you know, for another 20, 30 years. Uh, well, there was uh, the change in the production process, you know, I mean, from manual to more. And, and another important aspect of development, you cannot over jump certain uh, steps. So for example, from manual, uh, you know, pouring of yogurt or uh, sour milk, you know, into bottles, we didn't go for the full production line, but for the semi-automatic -pneum pneumatic machines, which are, still relatively easy to operate, but uh, change the process uh, radically. Why it is important? Because if you, if you over jump five, six steps, you, if you want to do much, people will not be able to follow. People have to, to do step by step, you know, to, 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 to get used, to get confidence, you know, and uh, to improve in, in that sense. So that's also another, another very important, you know, takeaway. Uh, quality assurance, changing, you know, the, 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 the way, you know, people did, you know, uh, uh, even today we got another confirmation of uh, certificates from the Tanzania Bureau of Standards, you know, for the products. So again, sharing skills, developing skills, but also at the same time doing a bit of infrastructure, you know, for that. Uh, that was another, another place of, for the project. We put another life, you see, th this building on the left, it used to be the colonial uh, coffee cooperative warehouses, you know, from the 50s. Uh, it was almost abandoned, you know, I mean, uh, for the last uh, uh, 20 years. So now it became, it was like a second life, you know, became again the farmer's center, uh, the process of collecting milk, you know, ag according to the local way, because Kilimanjaro is a very hilly, you know, difficult for, for crossing area, you know, so, so you collect milk by using the motorcycles, you know, I mean, people go and uh, collect milk. Uh, they, 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 they store the milk, you know, they test the milk, you know, and they deliver to the, but also at the same time, a lot of uh, knowledge sharing in terms of the uh, agro advice, uh, for example, about the new animal type of food, artificial insemination. We became experts in artificial insemination, by the way. And I'm joking, but also in terms of, uh, managerial aspects, you know, I mean, uh, starting from the very base level, like instead of doing the manual records, you go with Excel, you know, you do tables, you teach people, you know, also in terms how to do formulas and so on. Yeah. So, so some basic things, but now, I mean, really, I mean, dealing with issues like, uh, like, like how to manage the receivables in the best way and so on. Yeah. So, so, so the all kinds of aspects of management, uh, today, yeah, they are, these cooperatives, uh, well, they, they do well, you know, they're almost uh, uh, 900 uh, participating farmers who are involved in milk collection and uh, the, the dairy plant, you know, processes uh, these 4,000, hopefully soon it will, it will go double the capacity. And the, 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 the final in terms of like a few thoughts, uh, Yes, Africa, yeah, I believe, I don't want to repeat myself, but will be very important part of the history for good or for bad. It has a lot of potential and we do believe, you know, and we do everything, you know, that uh, uh, as, as uh, humans, we should definitely go for the, for the good scenario. But uh, uh, I mean, uh, being realistic, I believe we also have like a very huge probability of like a massive crazy, crisis, you know, facing us. In terms of uh, the type of approach we took is uh, think big, but act small. This is the, if you, if you want to be credible, if you want to build knowledge, real understanding, this is the only way to do. Uh, in terms of practical, how to make it effective, 
I mean, our experience tells us do it through local leaders, never do it, you know, I mean, uh, above the heads of the people. And I'm also talking this from the, uh, my personal experience, you know, I'm being the first recruit, you know, of, uh, of big American company in Poland, you know, I mean, uh, if, 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 it was not like us Polish people, you know, being heavily invested, you know, I mean, in, I mean, the, the company would not have developed, you know, so from the day one, we became, you know, the, the subject, not the objects of the development. And the same I, I preach and then and see as, as a way to go forward for, for Africa. Oh, sorry. Uh, having said that, development is a tricky business. It's a very difficult. And uh, one thing which we definitely advocate and, uh, and, 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 and try to follow is that we never take away responsibility from people for their lives, which of course is a difficult part because uh, people, humans are humans, whether they, they are Africans or Europeans or Americans or Asians or whatever, we have good, good, good side and bad side of our nature. Yeah? So, but we never take responsibility. Yeah? And in the end, yeah, take effective action. I wanted to share also this, this picture because I found it a few days ago and I like that, you know, because really it says what we, what we try to do in life, you know. So this is Wayne Gretzky, by the way, uh, he's uh, our compatriot, Polish compatriot, you know, and uh, so, so I'm very proud that he came up with this idea. Uh, I skate to where the park is going to be, uh, not where it has been. So really looking, you know, to the future, positioning, you know, there is, uh, is, is really the essence of, of what we are trying to, to do. Okay, so this is at this stage, yeah, to, to do the briefing. So I would suggest that if you have any, any questions, any comments, let's have an open forum because I, I believe it will be much more, much more interesting, yeah. Actually, I do, Robert. Um, first of all, thank you very much for the for the walkthrough and uh, the really nice presentation. And I'm sure you feel uh, very proud of, of your accomplishments. Um, so uh, from my end, um, I've been very, very much focused on Sub-Saharan Africa and East Africa in, in specific since um, 2017, when uh, the bank that I work for has uh, given us the mandate to explore and assess uh, expansion opportunities into, into Sub-Saharan Africa. And uh, ever since, I've been uh, going in and out of East Africa a lot. Um, I've been to Kenya countless times. Um, so I understand the love that you have for Nairobi. Um, and uh, the thing that I come to understand is that uh, what Africa lacks the most is uh, awareness of Africa itself and Sub-Saharan Africa in specific um, from anywhere around the world. Uh, usually people would always think of Africa as this uh, primitive uh, place where uh, people are unaware of the technologies that people use, uh, they're unaware of uh, anything that's happening in the world, they're unaware of the impact ha Africa has on, 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 uh, on the global economy itself. Um, so that's one thing I absolutely uh, believe in is that it lacks awareness. Um, second is um, I've also learned that you cannot, and I'm sure also Robert, you understand this very well, you can't always uh, just see Africa as one block. Uh, Africa is, is best um, viewed as, as region. So you have East Africa with its uh, similarities. You have Southern Africa with the similarities. Same thing applies to Central, Western, and Northern Africa. And um, the one slide that I really, really loved the most was, uh, was, in the, was in the beginning where you were giving some statistics on the resources that Africa has. And uh, as an African myself, uh, what saddens me the most is that when you look at the, 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 the trade balances of, of, of African countries, um, at best, at best, you'd find that they export those raw materials. So the supply chain and the added value that all those African countries uh, have the potential to, 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 to integrate and develop um, they lack it. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a whole different discussion on why, uh, but I think it's ideas and the NGOs like yourself that focus on development. Um, although some people would say that it's, uh, it, it needs to be, it needs, needs to grow even bigger. It needs to be more diverse, but those are the, those are the seeds. Those are the seeds to make this transformation. And, uh, for all the reasons that you said, primarily the one on, 
uh, demographics and uh, and the fact that it's there is no fence that's high enough that's going to be stopping illegal immigrants to uh, migrate from Africa anywhere else. Um, the best thing that the whole world needs to do is understand the value of um, what Africa can do, the potential that Africa has, and believe in its own people and work on developing the, na- the, 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 the countries themselves as opposed to just going in with uh, a mindset of I'm only seeking profit. I mean, everybody who seeks profit, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a fact of life and it's, and it's very fair. Uh, but development of the local talent and the local expertise is something that, although it's not, not, not too many people like yourself believe in it, uh, but the fact that there's someone like you and I'm sure there are others who believe in it and uh, have been uh, taking so much time out of their lives and their effort to make a difference, um, it's only going to be inspiring to a lot more people. So uh, that's my thought, and I'm very, very happy to be a part of this conversation. And if it's okay, I'm just going to be posting my LinkedIn uh, profile so that uh, I can connect with everyone. Yeah, perfect. Man. Well, I mean, the, the, the message I'm trying to convey is that, uh, and, and honestly, I mean, uh, still very few people, you know, I mean, uh, understand. We, if we don't want to end up in a big crisis, we have no other choice than uh, really to work with people, you know, in, in, in Africa. And the fact we have to, to uh, you know, to, to appreciate, to understand where we stand, you know, what is the, the starting level. And in fact, it's, it's much higher than most of the, uh, the, the people in the, the West, you know, think because uh, the, the learning potential, but also the number of people who are really well educated, you know, already in Africa is much bigger, you know, than, uh, than, than uh, I mean, I would say the level of ignorance of the, of the West is, 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 is really, I mean, the, the, the problem here, you know, but uh, understanding that uh, if we only apply like a conventional wisdom, which is, uh, we look at these uh, resources, we, 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 we look, uh, we follow the, the, the concept of, uh, profit maximization and so on. This is a dead end, you know, type of uh, road because uh, I mean, uh, look, as I, as I showed you on these demographic graphs, between now and 2040, so during 20 years, we are going to have half a billion of young people with their energy, with their, you know, curiosity for, for, for uh, exploring the world, especially that through telecoms, you know, I mean, uh, all these, data, all the pictures, all the information, I mean, is available to, to, to everybody, you know, now. And uh, I mean, the, so we have, I believe, no other choice if we don't wake up, you know, and start working, you know, in a, in a proper way with Africa. I mean, that will be kind of a really serious crisis, you see. And again, I feel kind of a, a more um, authorized, you know, to, to, to talk about that because the way I understand the way and the reason why, for example, EU was extended, you know, 2004, why, why suddenly, you know, I mean, all these, you know, countries, poor countries of Eastern Europe were uh, allowed to enter was that at some stage people understood in the Western Europe, you know, that having, you know, these uh, hungry, I mean, not in a real sense, but, you know, I mean, uh, like, a, like a different category of people, you know, next to your border is a, is a potential disaster. You know, so it's better to start the process of kind of uh, gradual uh, unification, development, and so on. Yeah, and again, as I said, I mean, okay, I was born Polish. I could have been born French or Swedish or whatever. Doesn't matter. Having experience, you know, the way Poland developed, which is a very good case of, of success story in terms of, uh, I believe, we have to to to, to have like a similar approach. Uh, as Europe towards Africa. I mean, we are not doing any, any favor to anybody. We are doing favor to, to, you know, to ourselves. Otherwise, I mean, these millions or hundreds of millions of people, you know, will take advantage. Absolutely. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Robert, Robert, one question. Do you plan on making this a frequent uh, meeting set up, let's say, every month or every other month? Or is this a one-time 
uh, presentation of what you are doing? Or what's the intention? Well, this today's meeting is, uh, I mean, basically within, uh, are you alumni of uh, Chicago Booth or? Yeah, of course. Why do you think I'm in here? Oh, there are some people who are not, sorry. Oh, okay. So that's why I understand, you know, uh, I mean, we have the, the, the idea why I'm here today is that uh, Tomasz, who is uh, the head of the Polish, you know, alumni club, mm. I mean, basically coordinates, you know, these meetings, you know, like with different topics, you know, and uh, mm. I mean, a few mm. weeks ago, we talked about, uh, um, I mean, Robert, why don't you share, you know, what you are doing there, you know, so, so really this is about today's, yeah. But if you believe, you know, it makes sense to have more kind of a, uh, like a regular meetings, discussions for interested people, I have no problem, you know. I mean, uh, again, to be practical, probably, I mean, doing this weekly or monthly is probably too often, you know. But having, you know, one mm. meeting, I don't know, once a quarter for the good time and so on to exchange and then to act between these meetings, I, I believe it's a feasible, you know. And maybe even, I mean, we'll generate a lot of new energy and new ideas that would be that would that okay. was my let, thought and suggestion go ahead yeah. Please. Yeah. let me let me let me expand what what robert has just said we we are having we are trying to to have like a monthly meetings organized around a topic usually usually presented by um, alumni uh generally well this is this is one of the topics because well Robert Robert is into Africa but uh, previously we had we had discussions about the starting a, a vineyard and uh, producing wine uh, so uh, it's like a broad spectrum of topics we can discuss but if you if you if you've got some thoughts uh, just just let us let us know well I think Robert's suggestion once a quarter having uh, a meeting on African issues and especially his foundation in the, in the center, to me, it sounds appealing if he's willing to do it. And then, of course, if that's the case, uh, just talking and, and nothing else, that doesn't help much. Obviously, something has to come out of it. There has to be an outcome. Yeah. Either people get involved or other people share their experiences or a combination of things. But just him uh, explaining what he's doing and what a success is on his foundation might not be enough. Then it means should go along with particular ta ta tasks. Yeah, for everybody. Sure, 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 sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Robert, I, there, there is uh, one, one question, one question on the list uh, asked by the person that I believe uh, hasn't joined, but it popped up also uh, uh, with what Osama said. Do you believe in African countries or in Africa as a country or more regions within Africa? What's, what's your view on that? And Osama, I invite you to, to, to answer as well because you've got like uh, the best perspective living in in, in, in Egypt. In fact, Tomek, Tomasz, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I, I did not really follow the, 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 the substance of, of, of this because, uh, you know, this is one of the, the also big issues, like many discussions, you know, when you listen to people, I mean, in Poland, in Europe, and I think this is the ignorance, really, which, which is behind when they say Africa is a country. I mean, this is like telling Europe is a country, yeah, or Latin America or South America is a country, you know. But it happens to Africa much more frequently, this type of, uh, you know, expression than uh, to any other continent, you know. Uh, why? Probably because the level of knowledge of Africa for, for these people is, is, is really the lowest, you know, compared to other continents, you see. Uh, but I don't have a really good answer, you know, in terms of that, you know, I mean, why people, and, and, and imagine that was, I think last year, there was a meeting, you know, uh, headed by the, the one of the deputy ministers of foreign affairs of Poland, you know, and then during the, the presentation, he, he said exactly the same, Africa is a country, you know, I mean, look, these guys, you know, diplomats, I mean, I mean, to make this type of, you know, I mean, mistake, you know, it's a really, I mean, it's, it's a disgrace, yeah, but, uh, uh, but this is one. The other, if we agree that Africa is not a country, but it's a continent, you know, but because of the, the ignorance, even if people know that these are countries there, for them, it's just one, you know, I mean, uh, they don't, they cannot differentiate, you know, they, they cannot say, you know, anything, you know. Uh, and of course, and this is now referring to Osama, you know, I mean, uh, 
I mean, I'm sure, Sama, you have been uh, many times, you know, I mean, in the discussion with the Egypt and generally the, the whole uh, uh, Northern Africa, is it really Africa or it's something else, you see? Uh, well, yes, I mean, you can discuss that way, that, that, that uh, the, 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 the Northern Africa is uh, in itself, you know, I mean, uh, like, a, like a different region. It's just one of the regions of Africa, you know, with its characteristics for... For, 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 for type of people, for type of environment, for type of geography, uh, and so on, yeah. But then in the, in the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa, as Osama mentioned, you know, I mean, you have the, I mean, uh, East Africa, again, I mean, uh, is, is, is very much different, you know, uh, than West Africa, even considering the, you know, the, the natural environment. Generally in Africa, you know, the nature, the environment plays much bigger role in everything, you know, the way you live, the way you, I mean, work, the way you behave and so on, yeah. And uh, East Africa is different than West Africa in terms of the natural environment, you know. East Africa is mostly dominated by Rift Valley, you know, I mean, you have more kind of uh, diverse uh, landscape uh, with all kinds of... Uh, uh, consequences. West Africa is, 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 is more flat, you know, the Sahara enters, you know, much more with the, you know, from the north and so on. Again, it has its implication and so on, yeah. South Africa is again, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a different uh, different story. So, uh, but even each individual country, I mean, uh, take the issue of, uh, you know, there are more than 2,000 tribes, you know, I mean, of, of people, you know, in Africa. Take Tanzania, I mean, where I spend most of the time now. It's 124 countries, uh, but really Tanzanians feel like Tanzanians, you see? I mean, uh, but take Kenya and Osama, you, you tell me later whether you, you, this is also your experience. In Kenya, which is next door, again, due to historical reasons, you see, you are Luo or Kikuyu before you are Kenyan, you see? Uh, and this is because of history. I mean, Kenyatta didn't do a good job, you know, of creating the, the, the Kenyan nation, you know, when uh, Nyerere did, you know, and uh, by, by, by mixing, you know, uh, these 124 tribes, you know, in, uh, in, in Tanzania, it's a just different, uh, different situation than uh, the neighboring Kenya. What is better? What is worse? Again, there are pluses and minuses, you know, so, so, so there is nothing like one Africa, you know, I mean, it's uh, very different. And this is also why we kind of limited ourselves to operate in East Africa, because, uh, I mean, it's just too big, you know, to, to know everything, you know, in, the, in that mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. I agree with you, Robert. I mean, uh, as far as Kenya is involved and uh, whether you're Kikuo or Luo, uh, I mean, just for the benefit of everyone. So Kikuyus and the Luos are the largest two uh, ethnic groups in, 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 in Kenya. The Kikuyus are, are much larger in number, but those are the two... Uh, largest ethnic uh, ethnic groups in Kenya. And uh, what happened, I mean, this was actually in 2007 that uh, that that was, uh, I mean, a terrible illustration of um, the tribalism within, within Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, so there were um, very violent clashes in the 2007 presidential elections in Kenya, uh, primarily because one candidate was a Kikuyu and the other was a Luo. And uh, I mean, that's how bloody it was, but I mean, thank God, not anymore. But at the end of the day, ethnicity still exists and uh, people could still tell whether you're from this tribe or that tribe just by the way you look. Um, but I mean, that's as far as um, tribalism is concerned. As far as the, uh, the other question, um, whether I believe in Africa or African countries, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's just a synonym because Africa will never reach its potential unless African countries reach their potential. And... Um, even, I mean, believe it or not, even when someone would ask me where I'm from and I would say Egypt, it wouldn't even, I mean, they wouldn't be joking when they would ask me if I still go to school or go to work on campus. Uh, I mean, it's really, really funny. And it's said at the same time when someone who's uh, not a young, young, not a young man or a kid who would make such a, such a, such a very strange statement. Uh, but it just, it still, still tells you how uh, people are unaware of what Africa is, how large Africa is, um, the number of countries in Africa. Uh, because then, I mean, the way, it, the, 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 the way it's portrayed is that the whole world is the US, EU, and possibly 
Australia and Japan. Um, and China. And, well, of course. I mean, that goes without saying. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, I mean, that's the whole world to a lot of people, which is, which is really sad. Um, but, I mean, when you look at Africa and uh, the current uh, integration efforts, so uh, in 2020, the uh, African Union signed the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, uh, which creates the largest economic bloc. Uh, on the uh, in in the world, I mean, besides the one that was signed in by by uh, in for the for the Asia Pacific region, uh, but other than that, uh, when you look at fifty four African countries trying to to to, to trade within themselves, and um, I'm certain there are so many synergies that so many neighboring countries could be could be of of great assistance. So I'll give you one example, which is a perfect success story for East Africa. When you look at Rwanda, Rwanda is seen as Singapore, but back in the 60s, I when I when I went to Rwanda, I think it's not too far away from being Singapore 10, 15 years ago. Um, in 2018, they were talking about rolling out 5G networks when Rwanda had a 99.9% 4G coverage. Um, Rwanda has a manufacturing plant for uh, Volkswagen. So when I went there, the cars that were taking the, the uh, participants of the conference to their hotels were... Volkswagen Passat made in Rwanda. Uh, you look at the infrastructure. I mean, it's something that is top notch. Um, I mean, I, I, I haven't been to South Africa, but it's considered the most developed country in, in, in Africa. Egypt's not too far behind, but I can easily say that Rwanda's infrastructure by far beats that of Egypt. And when you compare sizes and budgets, there's no comparison, but Rwanda has managed to do that. So I'm certain that once you have... Um, the proper vision and the proper belief in that vision by the nation and the right drive towards development and economic growth in parallel, not one over the other. There's so much that you can do where profit maximization will naturally follow. I mean, it's not one end where you have to pick either that end of the triangle or that end of the triangle or that end of the triangle. They all come together. And um, again, ideas like, like, like that of Robert, uh, student organizations like the one I mentioned called Enactus, uh, so many foundations that give opportunity for uh, African youth to go out there, present themselves, uh, get the opportunity to get proper education, uh, be the proper entrepreneurs. Um, I'm sure that Africa can, can, can very well astonish the world. I mean, mobile money, mobile money is made in Africa. It was made in Kenya. And it was all because of the fact that because of the limited infrastructure and the fact that so many people live in remote areas, the best way was they came up with the idea of the mobile money that allowed them to remit money from one part, from one part in Kenya to somewhere else that is remote and they couldn't access it. Um, so I, I, I believe in both because when you believe in one, the other gets going. It's, uh, it's uh, I mean, it's a domino effect. Okay, guys, we are, our time is up. So maybe just a final comment, Robert, on, on your side. Uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, I think this one final question or a few thoughts on this because, uh, okay, it's good we discuss in general, we got to know each other. Uh, but uh, as a Chicago Bulls alumni, what, what can we do? What can I do, you know, in that sense, yeah? And here, I mean, very simple, I mean, ideas you know and this is in fact i mean on individual level uh well one is uh what you can do is really to start i mean invest in a small scale but really to start learning you know i mean uh, to getting you know the real knowledge uh but with the proper attitude that proper attitude and this is also what in my consulting capacity when i work with clients who who invest now uh not necessarily their money, but invest their energy in Africa. Uh, that that motto of uh, to develop, grow together. So you don't go for maximizing the profit. You go for developing yourself together with developing somebody else. You know. So 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 uh, the way I was developed, for example, as a Anderson, you know, uh, initially assistant, but then I grew up to become the partner of the. Of the Anderson, you know, but from day one, I knew somebody is investing in me. Somebody paid for my MBA, for 
and so on, so on. That was very obvious, you know, that uh, somebody wants me to succeed, you know. So, so, so there are, I mean, uh, countless, you know, ideas what you can do in a small scale in terms of investing, you know. It, do, it doesn't have to be a lot of money to start with, but that will help you really to grow the, the, the real knowledge yeah? and the, the real understanding. But then the second point is sharing knowledge and skills. You know, with so many young people, one of the most busy businesses, you know, in Africa is education. You have schools, you know, every corner, all kinds of schools from uh, very nice big universities or, you know, campuses to, to schools under the palm tree, you know. I mean, it's a booming business, you know. Uh, so hundreds, thousands of schools. So if you really want, you can attach yourself one way or the other, you know, to, to one of the, of, the, of the schools. And it doesn't make, I would say, a uh, difference, you know. I mean, it's the question, again, of getting the, the proper understanding and contributing at this stage to become one of the, whatever, associated, let's call it teacher, yeah? So like a visiting teacher role or virtual learning and so on. Again, the, the benefit of that is that you enter into the water. You, you, before you start swimming, you know, I mean, at least you get a sense of the water, you know, you, you start understanding, you know, what is going on and you, you, you make also relationships and so on, yeah. Then mentoring a business, a community or an individual is another very simple thing, you know, I mean, uh, uh, and again, that helps to, 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 to develop the proper understanding of the people on the other side to, to learn specific knowledge of, uh, of uh, like a business environment, business. Uh, so these are like three simple points. I mean, simple in inverted comma, because of course it takes effort, you know, and dedication to do them, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a like a systematic way. Uh, I'm practicing all three of them, you know, at, at present, you know, on top of the, of the, of the of doing also these, these projects, yeah. But there's a Chicago booth, I don't know. I mean, uh, at some stage I, I asked uh, that question to Penka because, uh, uh, maybe, maybe it would make sense, you know, to have like a special program, you know, I don't know to what extent you are familiar with, uh, the idea of the Peace Corps, you know, the American idea from John Fitzgerald Kennedy at that time, you know, uh, okay. Chicago booth is, is, uh, is the American university, but to have like a, like a specific, uh, Chicago booth, uh, whatever corpse, you know, of, of people who want to. Uh, to get involved in education of, of young Africans or youth, you know, in a, in a, and it doesn't have to be university to university, very formal cooperation. It can be uh, where, I mean, uh, basically you start again, acting small with the bigger idea that this is exchanging the knowledge, but really having, you know, the visiting, visiting teacher role, you know, for alumni, but under the umbrella of the, of the, of the, of the Chicago booth. I mean, could be, I mean, something maybe unique for the, for the school also, you know, in that sense, yeah. Whether, whether these are good ideas, I don't know. I mean, again, I mean, uh, it takes two to dance, you know. I mean, uh, uh, I know that I will be continuing, you know, on my side, you know, but uh, I, I mean, one of the takeaways of today will be that maybe we should have these uh, Africa-specific meetings, you know, every quarter. And I'm happy to, to take it as a, as a very specific takeaway of today and add... Uh, to, to my list of to-do points, you know, and the, the progress points. So, so that, these are just my ideas. Um, so that, that's it really, what I wanted to, 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 to finish. So to, Robert, thank you very much, Thomas. If you guys want to make it a, a, a quarterly thing, I'd be happy to join. Sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, just okay. please, one of you has to take the leadership, obviously. Okay. Um, Thank you. I didn't introduce myself. I'm also serving in boards that are involved in African uh, projects, but it's a different story. We can talk about it at some, some other point. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. yeah. okay, and okay, just guys. to let you know that the school has a specified center for social, social, social sector innovation, which is the Rustanda Center. So I will post a link to their activities there if you want to join. Okay. okay, great, great, great. Okay, thank you, Robert, for sharing, sharing your experience with us. And, and thank you, Osama, for sharing your insights uh, about Africa and uh, you, Volker, for sharing a number of uh, interesting articles. Maybe I, I, I will share with you the, the contents of the chat uh, so that you, you have it, you have it for, for future reference.